Hello Matt here, thanks for joining me again. In this video I'm going to compare the Leica M6 to the Nikon FE2. You may wonder why I want to do this if I call myself a Leica photographer. I want to do this because I want to show you five reasons why the Nikon FE2 is better than the Leica M6. And I'm saying this as a Leica photographer and it's not clickbait. I really did buy this camera to fill all the shortcomings of the Leica. They do both have their benefits. Stay tuned and I'll compare a £2,000 camera to a £200 camera. I enjoy using Leica cameras, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy other cameras as well. So this video I want to highlight five reasons why the Nikon FE2 is better than the Leica M6 and most of my work especially digital is with Leica cameras so I do appreciate Leica cameras but at the same time I'm not a Leica fanboy to the extent that I won't use other brands I want to highlight the fact that I do use other great cameras and this channel is not only limited to Leica cameras and Leica lenses so five reasons why I bought the Nikon FE2 and why I would use it instead of the Leica M6. Number one, maximum flash sync speed. If you're a photographer that enjoys using flash such as myself or portraiture, Leica film cameras are not the ideal platform for this type of photography. The maximum flash sync speed on a Leica M camera, whether it's a Leica M4P, Leica M6, is one over 50 of a second. That's your maximum. The problem with the maximum flash sync speed of one over 50 is if you're mixing flash and ambient light, which is what I often do, if there's any slight movement from the model or the subject, you're gonna get motion blur in your images. So it is really limiting if you kind of enjoy flash photography. A Nikon FE2 maximum flash sync speed is 1 over 250 of a second. And now 1 over 250 is fast enough to reduce the ambient light without needing to use ND filters. So on a Leica, for example, I might use ND filters on the lens to drop the ambient light and then use flash to kind of make the photo or the lighting more creative or more directional lighting. With a Nikon FE2, because it has a maximum flash sync speed, as you can see on the top, of 1 over 250, to 1 over 250 already reduces the available light, so it's much easier to use flash. So reason number one, if you love flash photography, say for portraiture, Nikon is better than Leica, and this is like all Leica film cameras this is. Number two, maximum shutter speed. The maximum shutter speed on Leica film cameras is 1 over 1000. This, if you're using fast lenses such as the Leica Summerlux 50mm f1.4 or spherical, as on the M6 here, this is really limiting in bright light conditions. You're going to have to use ND filters if you want to shoot at f1.4. And this can be a bit of a pain if you're in and out of bright dark conditions. So when I've shot weddings in the past, I've kind of learned to get smarter and change my style. And you can't have an ND filter on outside the church, then you get inside the church and you have to take ND filter off and it turns into a bit of a faff. The maximum shutter speed of a Nikon FE2 is 1 over 4000. So that means you almost never need ND filters. I've never used ND filters, even on fast lenses such as the Voigtlander Nocturn 58mm f1.4 or say the Nikkor 50 f1.2. The additional kind of bonus advantage if you kind of like night photography is the Nikon FE2 has a slow shutter speed down to one down to eight seconds so this is really nice for night photography 
the shutter speed options on a Leica phone camera is boom, one second through to one over 1000. The shutter speed options on a Nikon FE2 is bulb mode and then eight seconds through to one over 4000. So reason number two, better shutter speed options, especially useful in bright conditions. So you could argue less required in the UK. But for night photography, the, the eight seconds is quite handy. Um, so nice to have. Number three, my biggest, second biggest gripe. The two things I really don't like about Leica film cameras is one, the slow flash sync speed, because I like flash. And probably even more than that is I really struggle with the fact that the Leica rangefinder system only focuses as close as 0.7 meters. If you want to do like a really kind of intimate headshot or something, some creative crop where you've got kind of half the face missing. You can't do that with a Leica camera with a standard Leica lens. Yes, you can use the close focus adapters like that I shared in the Leica macro photography slash close up adapter video such as the goggles on the Leica M3 with the Leica Summicron dual focus as an example, but it's still limiting and it's still, it's still a real pain in the bum. With a SLR camera, this lens will focus as close as 0.45 meters and some lenses will focus much closer. So as a portrait photographer, sometimes I really struggle with the fact that Leica cameras don't go closer than 0.7 meters. Close focus, 0.7 meters and then this is lens limiting but it's normally at least 0.5 meters to 0.3 meters depending on the lens. There is quite a large price difference. The Nikon FE2 is 10 times cheaper than a like M6. I'll do the maths in a minute. The fifth reason why I prefer the Nikon FE2 SLR over the Leica M6 rangefinder, the Nikon F mount gives you, opens up your world to so many cheap lenses and such a wide variety of lenses. Nikon cameras are obviously a lot cheaper than Leica cameras. Nikon lenses are also much cheaper than Leica lenses, or you can get cheap lenses for a Nikon camera. Generally speaking, for most people that think of Leica lenses, this is like a one sided argument. Yes, Leica lenses are expensive, Nikon mount lenses are cheap. I am trying to break that myth with some of my lens series videos showing that you can get cheap lenses for a Leica camera as well. But you're still limited, generally speaking, the common ones are normally within a small band of focal lengths, perhaps 35mm, 50mm being the most common, sometimes 90mm. If you want something really wide, it's going to cost you more money. If you want something really long, very extremely uncommon, the longest lens for the Leica rangefinder, using it as a rangefinder, is the 135mm focal length. Now, if you like long lenses for um, the telephoto effect, on a Nikon FE2, you can use, I don't know, I could use my crazy Nikkor 200mm F2 lens. I've got a really nice, Nikon 180mm Prime. I've got a lot of Nikon lenses from when I used to shoot Nikon before I moved to Leica. The Nikon platform gives you a really great starting point to use so many lenses at quite an affordable price. The other, the other advantage is if you're using a telephoto, talking about lenses, if you're using telephoto lenses on SLR cameras, what you see through the viewfinder is kind of what you get with a rangefinder system, using 135mm lens on a rangefinder really limits your view because you're, you're seeing a small window inside the normal uh, viewfinder window. The longer the lens, the smaller the, the window gets. So one, you're kind of limited to 135mm for shooting film without any kind of special adapters. And number two, it's harder to focus because it's very difficult to see. With a Nikon, you can use any lens, really wide, really long. You can put a 500mm lens on, you can put a crazy wide lens on, and it works on everything. So that is one big advantage of 
SLR cameras, and in this example, the Nikon FE2. Three similarities between the Leica M6 and the Nikon FE2. Number one, they are both black. No, I'm joking. Well, they are both black, but that's not one of the points. I guess it kind of is. They are both 35 millimeter film cameras that have the ability to take amazing pictures. They are both tools. Both of these cameras will take as amazing a picture if you put some effort in and kind of have the creative mindset. Number two, the weight of these cameras based only on the body weight is extremely similar. It's like 550 for the Nikon FE2, 550 grams, 560 grams for the Leica M6. And also number three, both of these 35mm film cameras have built-in light meters and they both take the same LR44 battery. These are the small LR44 coin batteries used in both the like M6 for the light meter and the Nikon FE2. One difference between these two cameras is the Leica M6 is a fully manual camera and it only requires batteries for the light meter. The batteries go in under this patch here. The Nikon FE2 is an automatic camera which relies on the batch on the batteries which go underneath to operate. It can operate without batteries but it's limited to the manual speed of 250th of a second. So on a bright day you could work with this but if you're working in low light on a dull and cloudy day in England you're gonna go you need to go and find some batteries. The good news is these types of batteries are very kind of easy to find in the in most small shops and supermarkets, things like this. So to recap, five reasons why I bought the Nikon FE2, despite the fact that I call myself a Leica photographer. This fills the gaps and the shortfalls that the Leica can't provide. That being one over 250 for maximum flash sync speed, amazing for flash photography, Number two, one over four thousandth of a second, very useful to have in bright light, means I rarely need ND filters. Number three, and probably the main reason I bought this camera, is it will focus closer than a Leica. That's really helpful for me. Sometimes when I travel for model photo shoots, I'll take both a rangefinder camera and a SLR camera. Both of these cameras have advantages. And number five, the fact that SLR cameras give you the ability to use telephoto lenses and a wide variety of cheap lenses you can find on eBay. One other feature that I really like about SLR cameras is what you see is what you get. So when you're looking through the viewfinder, what you see in front of you is exactly the photo you'll, you'll get in the final image. The problem with the rangefinder camera is you're not looking through the lens. So just to recap, the difference between a rangefinder and an SLR. SLR camera, you look through the lens hit the prism with the mirror and then out, of, out the viewfinder. So literally what you see is the final picture. With the rangefinder camera, it's slightly different. You're not looking through the lens. So you could have the lens cap on and not even notice. You're looking through these this window here. This can be a problem. And a really common example I find for my own photography and especially say portraits is if I want to say, shoot through some, I don't know, shoot through a fo some foliage or shoot through a fence and say you've got fence slats like this I'm going to line it up so I can see where I'm looking with my eyeball through the slats and then what happens is the leaf or the wood slat or the blind or whatever you're looking through it's not over the viewfinder the object in front of the lens will not block the viewfinder so it looks like you have a clear path to your subject but it's over the lens so you may get back and you'll have your picture and it may have a leaf across it because the tree leaf is here. And I'm looking at the model behind the tree leaf, behind the tree leaf, framing the model's head between, I don't know, three or four leaves and shooting through. When you shoot through with a rangefinder, often there's something in front of the lens. And so I can see the model, but the model can't see me. One top, top tip, I've learned is ask the model to say, can she see the lens? 
If she can see the lens clearly with no objects in front, the lens can see her and therefore it should be okay. I really enjoy careful compositions and thinking things through like this. So having an SLR camera, I enjoy the fact that I can literally peek through a small gap on a fence or between some leaves on a tree and not have to worry if I'm not photographing a model, if I'm framing a subject in the distance, maybe a landscape, and I'm using the, the foliage in the foreground to frame my distance subject. I can't ask my distance subject to tell me if they can see the lens. So for this is another reason why I prefer SLR cameras. In terms of price, I just checked on eBay the average price for this like M6 setup and the average price for the Nikon FE2 setup. So just so we can recap, this is the Leica M6 film camera with a Similux 50mm f1.4 spherical lens. How much does this cost? I was really shocked. The, the prices seem to have gone up quite a lot since I last checked. The cost for this setup is £4,000. £2,000 for a like M6 body it seems to be the going rate. Can be more and doesn't seem to be often that less. So it's 2000 or more. Seems to be I checked shops and I checked eBay to get a fair price and they're all really expensive. And then I checked the lens and this lens second hand seems to be going for around £2,000 or even more for the spherical vision. So this is a £4,000 camera which makes me a bit more worried about carrying it around. I forget how much. I didn't pay this much but the prices have increased a lot. In comparison I bought the Nikon FE2 last year and I also got the FE. If you want to see the comparison between a Nikon FM, Nikon FE2 and Nikon FE, I've got all three. So check in the description below and I'll put a link to a side-by-side -side comparison of a FE, FE2 and FM Nikon. My favourite of the three is the FE2. So this is the one that gets used the most. The price for Nikon FE2 also seems to have gone up even since last year. The average price for Nikon FE2 body at the time of looking was around £200. I was going to show you this lens. This is the Nikkor 50mm f1.2 AIS lens. But as a more comparable shooting setup, the Voigtlander Nocturne 58 f1.4 is super sharp, wide open. I think it's um, designed on an old Topcon similar lens, very similar lens design as a vintage Topcon lens. This lens is very good wide open. Similux is extremely good wide open, but they're, they're quite comparable considering the price difference. This is the reason I bought the Voigtlander lens new. I think it was new or nearly new for the Nikon to make the Nikon on a par in terms of shooting capabilities as the Leica whether it's a Leica M3, Leica M6. Obviously the Leica M3 doesn't have a light meter, that's why I'm using the Leica M6 in this example because it's the most comparable ca Leica film camera I use to the Nikon FE2. Cost of a Nikon FE2, 200 pounds. Cost of a lens, now whether it's, I looked at the price of the 1.2, which is a beautiful lens, but it's slightly soft to wide open, so I wouldn't say it's a, straight comparison to the summer looks. This lens now seems to be going for about £400 and new the cost of a Nocturne 58mm seems to be about 450 Camera and lens £650 GBP. Camera and lens £4,000 GBP. So that is a almost £3,500 difference between the two cameras and both cameras can take equally good photos if you kind of put some effort in. Which of these two cameras do you think took my most liked photo I've ever taken? So on Flickr you can sort your photos posted onto your own account by likes. And I sorted by likes and the most liked photo I've ever taken is taken with a Nikon FE2. <laughs> so it kind of shows that even if you spend £4,000 on a camera, 
it's not necessarily going to give you better images. One disadvantage of Nikon cameras over Leica cameras is you buy a Leica camera for a small setup. So I just wanted to do some myth busting. Nikon is lighter <laughs> by 10 grams, very close. You then would say Nikon lenses are always bigger than SLR lenses. So again, I wanted to bust the myth the best I can. If you saw my smallest Leica M mount lens video, you'll see me share literally the smallest like M mount lenses I own. To show you size comparison and to show you that a Nikon setup doesn't need to be large. Here's a 40mm lens on the Leica M6. Here's a 40mm lens on a Nikon FE2. Now, obviously the Leica mount lens is smaller, but in terms of depth, the Nikon does a pretty good job. Just to explain what, I've, what lenses I've got here, Minolta Rocker M 40mm f2, Voigtlander Ultron 40mm f2. Both these lenses are super small for their cameras that they relate to, so Nikon doesn't need to be big. So I hope you found this video useful. I just wanted to point out the future videos are not only going to be like a base videos. I don't want to kind of go down the path of only doing Leica because a lot of my photography I enjoy cameras other than Leica and I didn't want to kind of I want to talk about what I'm interested in and what I'm using at the time so one week I might be using a TLR camera one week I might be using a 4x5 camera one week I may be using Mamiya 7 Mamiya RZ House of Lad Mamiya 6 the list is endless. All these video, all these cameras I need to do a review for. I'll try to tie them in where possible to the Leicas so you can see why I would use a SLR rather than a Leica when I call myself a Leica photographer. So I hope this video explains some of the benefits of owning a SLR camera even if you are a predominantly Leica photographer. They do have their benefits. Yes, you could work with the flaws and stick to Leica, and I'm sure many people do this. But I quite like the enjoyment of working with different camera formats. I think it keeps it fresh and keeps it interesting. And you can pull the benefits from each camera system. Some of my cameras are quite comparable to Leica, so I can do Leica versus Camera X. But some of my cameras I'll just have to maybe make a separate medium format film camera review series. But where comparable I'll compare them side by side. So in another video I need to do, I've got a Hasbrad X-Pan. So I'll show you Hasbrad X-Pan compared to a Leica M6. Both of these cameras are quite comparable and you can see the, the benefits of each system. That'll be coming in a, in a video soon. I'll share some images from each of these cameras and you can decide for yourself if you notice any difference in terms of which camera was used for which image. If you use Nikon cameras, I'd love to hear which is your favourite lens and favourite body. Feel free to comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.